Hello everyone, my name is Yu Han Ling. Today I'm going to present our paper, Shell. Shell is a self-supervised hybrid learning framework for secure attack detection in containerized applications. And I would like to introduce my co-authors, Bogo, Xiaohui, Jinju, and Hugo. Before we get started, I would like to let you know how vulnerable containers are. Here are some recent news I found online when searching for container vulnerability. And because containers are vulnerable, we like to detect attacks to the containers. However, this is not easy. There are two main challenges. First, container environments are highly dynamic. You can deliver different workloads to different containers running different main applications. Second, containers are open short lib, which means it's difficult to collect sufficient high quality labeled training data. We studied the papers about attack detections in containers. Some people propose supervised learning the advantages of supervised learning is that it can achieve high detection rate. However, it requires labeled data. For unsupervised learning, it does not require labeled data. However, it can suffer from high force alarm rate. Semi-supervised learning try to solve the problem by such with a supervised model and then use an unsupervised model to augment the supervised model. However, it still requires data labeling. In our past experiment, we observed that most false alarms occur close, close to the region that is slightly above the anomaly detection threshold. We defined those regions as boundary cases. As we can see from the graph on the right, even with 110 boundary case, it contains more than 50% of false alarms. And if we can increase the boundary case from 110% to 200%, then we're able to capture more than 85% of false alarms. Our approach is from this observation. We start from an unsupervised model to capture unknown attacks to the containers. And then we employ supervised learning for cross-validating those boundary cases. Let's move on to the system overview. Shell continuously monitoring the system calls from the containers. After capturing those system call load traces, we perform the first step of system call pre-processing. And after pre-processing, we're able to have system call frequency vectors. Those frequency vectors are then fed into unsupervised model for anomaly detection. The unsupervised anomaly detection components detect anomalies in the system core frequency vectors using autoencoder. After capturing those anomalies, we have the last module. The hybrid alert validation components check whether the detected anomalies is a boundary case and invokes the supervised model to perform cross validation if it is really a boundary case. Upon an attack alert, show will create a supervised model such as run the forest using a window of recent system call frequency vectors before the after the attack is detected. And at last, the system security attack alerts is sent back to the container. 
I'm going to talk about a tech example of open SSH CVE 2016 6515. It is a remote denial of service attack which exploits the lack of limitations on password length, which results in consuming excessive CPU. As you can see, the samples of system call trace on the bottom left, each 100 milliseconds system call trace samples is converted into one row of system call frequency vector on the right. And we can see that some rows are in red, which means that they are in the attack period. We can also observe that the system call access and MMAP increase sharply during the attack period. After we have those frequency vectors, we adopt auto encoder as a civil unsupervised model to capture the anomalies. Autoencoder has a symmetric architecture, which tries to reproduce the input at the upper layer. The trained autoencoder model computes the difference between an input vector and its reconstruction of the vector into a value called reconstruction error. The model will compare the reconstruction error against the predefined percentile value to detect anomalies. After we have collected those anomalies from the system called vacancy vector, we then move on to the next step. Instead of relying on manual data labeling, show automatically creates training data labels by performing outline detections using isolation forest model. And after we have collected those outliers, in order to verify those outliers, we adopt similarity filtering. And then the last step is to create a training data set with a supervised model. The remaining outliers after similarity filtering are labeled as positive and then data for previous normal periods are labeled as negative. After we have this training data set, we then perform the supervised model training. For the online detection, we use the isolation forest. Isolation forest is similar to runner forest, which consists of many isolation trees. We can take a look at the example on the right. With the input vector of red curve one and red curve five, each isolation tree is able to tell the final node for that input vector. We use the height of the node and average height of all leaf nodes to calculate the anomaly scores. And then we compare the anomaly score with the threshold. In this example, because the anomaly score of six, 0 0.66 is less greater than the threshold, this input vector is an outlier. Because online detections may not always be accurate, we use similarity filtering to ver verify those outliers. We calculate the pairwise Mahala distance between the outliers and every normal data points. And then we remove those outliers with minimum distance less than a certain threshold. As we can see from the example on the bottom right, for these outliers, because the minimum Mahala distance is greater than the threshold, this outlier is kept. However, these outliers at the bottom, because the minimum Mahala distance is less than the threshold, that outlier is filtered. 
This simple approach helps us to reduce the false positive rate by up to 26% without reducing detection rate. Let's move on to experiment setup. We studied 41 recent vulnerabilities with severity score from moderate to high. And those 41 vulnerabilities come from 28 common containerized applications with six different threat impact categories. For example, returning showed and execute arbitrary code. To evaluate the experiment, uh, we introduce false bottle rate, detection rate, and lead time. If some raise an alarm, but there's no exploit, then it is false positive. Otherwise, it's true positive. If shove keeps silent and there's no exploit, then it's true negative. Otherwise, it's false negative. We use those definitions to calculate the false positive rate. And then we use the detection rate, which is a ratio of the number of containers detected over the total number of containers, which consists of both detected and missed. And then we choose lead times to define how early an attack can be detected before it succeeds. The more lead time we have, the better the model performs. We can be sure with several alternative approaches, such as cell patch. In order to make a fair comparison, we compare with the attack detection part of cell patch only. Please note that cell patch also adopts the autoencoder model. And then we compare sure with supervised runner forest model, but without the cell supervised model creation process. And then also we compare with supervised CRM model. As a summary, Shell is able to effectively build out false alarms with some missing true attack anomalies. It is able to reduce false positive rate by 39 to 91% with higher or similar detection rate. And Shell is lightweight and supports real-time secret attack detection. This table shows the detection result in detail. With 120 boundary case, we can see that shows is able to achieve a good detection rate of over 86, 89%, and post part rate of a little bit up above 2%. And if we can increase the bunch of case from 120% to 200%, then we can achieve the lowest false positive rate. And at the same time, we have a good detection rate. Now I'm going to talk about how different model performs in terms of different threat impact categories. As we can see, Shows is able to achieve low false positive rate among all threat in bad categories. And Shell is able to achieve more than 80% detection rate in four out of six threat in bad categories. At the last, Shell is able to achieve a good lead times among all threat in bad category, except the crash of the applications. Please note, for these threat in bad categories, because it happens suddenly, all models is not able to achieve a good lead time. At the end, we perform runtime analysis, and we can see that Shell is able to finished the detection in only 6.65 milliseconds. Recall that each sample represents 100 milliseconds. So Shaw is able to perform attack detections in real time.
which made it practical for large-scale container-based computing environments. As a conclusion, Shell is a new self-supervised hybrid learning framework, which combines the power of unsupervised machine learning and supervised machine learning. Shell is able to effectively filter out false alarms with some missing true attack anomalies. We evaluate shows over 41 real world attacks over 28 of applications. And last shows is lightweight and support real time secure attack detection. At the end of this presentation, we would like to thank our reviewers and the funding agency, NSA and Cisco. Thank you so much for your time.